Cool morning this morning, mid 40s. Up in the mountains, the temperatures usually do drop several dozen degrees at times. It's early, early October. The leaves are starting to change, fall is in the air. I've come to a really, really nice little forest hunter's campground that's really kind of pleasant. Welcome to the backyard, Professor. Rough Country Survival Videos. I'm up in the forest today. Sometimes you just have to take the time to just go to some place that's beautiful and spend a little time in it and enjoy the beauty of the world. Today I'm going to share with you a secret about the pine trees. It's kind of an open secret, but not really. And it could save your life. So let's go play today, out in the forest. And I'm going to walk around and I'm going to show you something about the pine trees. I'm actually going to show you a few things about the pine trees today. One of the greatest trees on the planet and they're everywhere in the Alpine mountain regions of the world. And I don't think it matters what kind of pine tree, but you remember the old Yule Gibbons show years ago. I'm dating myself now. <laughs> Now people know I really am 59 years old if I remember Yule Gibbons. He used to use that granola commercial, something about breakfast cereal. And he used to always say, the pine tree, many parts are edible. <laughs> he wasn't kidding. There's life-saving knowledge with the pine trees that I want to share with you today. Fun stuff. Let's go explore some pine trees. Ah, the beautiful thing about pine trees is they have so many uses. Shade on a sunny day. They have wonderful smell. You can make pine needle tea from their needles. And I might do that today just to show you how that's done. That's fun. And then there's another secret, and I think it's in all parts. Oh, there's a good looking tree right there we might have to look at. It's in all parts of the pine tree family is the sap. But we want to take a look at what we're looking for for sap. It's the way they heal themselves. It's a really good system. It's their blood clotting system. Here's a real good example of what I'm talking about, right here. Now sometimes the sap will be dark because it's older. Sometimes it'll be relatively light. That sap is really valuable to get, so we want to, just like that, knock it off. now. I want to show you a close-up. Hopefully the camera will do this. Yeah. Look at how the sap just saturates that little chunk of wood. That's actually either a, an insect or something was harming this tree right here. And so it oozes its sap out to cover it up. All of this right here is excellent fire starting material. Some saps will be a light brown like this. 
other saps will be heavy, heavy dark. But you can see the sap, how it's coming right out of the tree. That is excellent fire starting material. And don't be afraid to take some of the bark with you. See how this runs over right there? That little chunk right there. That's a good, yeah, you can see the sap in that. Dig just a little more in, get to the wood because the sap that saturates that wood really, really burns well. But I want to show you the secret that is tremendously fascinating about sap. Looks like we've got a nice little path up here. What we want to do is just explore and look at some uh, pine trees. Just open our eyes, think outside the box. Yeah, there's a nice one. Let me show you this one. Yeah, this one's really, really nice. Notice the sap. Something knocked this branch off. And there's a lot of sap in that pocket where the branch was. And it's been dripping down. Notice how it's dripping down? And then notice this part right here. I don't know if you can see this part enough. Yeah, you can. It's collected. It's pooled. And it's saturated the bark around this particular limb. This stuff right here is excellent fire starter. That's what we're looking for. You can see more of it that's been dripping. And like I say, see, this is kind of a light tan brown here. It's a darker brown up here. And then we've got some more up there and up there. The saps can be different colors depending on their uh, age. I mean, they can be five or six years old and it's all good to collect, right? Don't be a moron and kill the tree and mar the tree either. We got to take care of our trees. These things give us our oxygen, so it's good stuff. But they give us gifts and their sap is a gift. So that's a real good example of sap running down a tree. And this is a completely different pine tree than the one I just got that other chunk of sap off of. So I, I think the sap on all the pine trees is uh, very flammable. But there's another secret about it I want to share with you. And I'm going to wait until we get back to camp so that I can start a fire. I think I'll do a, I think I'll do a, uh, a bow drill fire for you today. That's a lot more exciting way to do a fire than just striking a match. I mean, heck, anybody can do that. That's boring, but I'll show you how to work a bow drill. Maybe I'll make a video on how to do a bow drill. It's a fun way to do stuff. All right. Look at this cotton picking tree. This tree is like a gold mine. Look at all the sap coming off of this tree in several different spots. Some of it's pretty hard. I gathered some sticks. I want to try to smear some sticks with this sap. Otherwise, I'll take that sap and put it in my vial. Oh, here's some that's running down. Yeah, it's pretty dry. Yeah, it's pretty dry. Okay, this is too dry. There's a lot of other trees. Yeah. That's pretty dry. There's a lot of other trees that have, uh, I've got a tree behind me here that has some fresh dripping sap. What you want to do with that is grab you some medium sized sticks about the size of your fingers for your fire and smear that sap on these sticks. That's really good to do. I'm going to gather these in my bottle. Looks like, yeah, that's a little sticky. That's not bad. That probably dripped a few days back. Yeah, I got some chunks up here. Got some chunks all the way around this side and all the way around the back. This tree has really been pouring sap. Yeah, that's, that's a couple of days old. So let me put this in my little bottle. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll put those sticks down. Because like I always said, you always carry empty containers with you when you're out walking, hiking, exploring, having fun. We're playing today. 
because these little bottles are excellent to collect stuff in. Absolutely. So I'm going to use my Leatherman for this and not my real man knife, my Rambo knife, because I don't want to get it all sticky and gooey. Then you just... Oh, that's excellent stuff here. Look at that. Great big chunk of pure natural fire starter. Put the bottle under there and grab some chunks. Oh yeah. Oh, this is sensational stuff. Oh, look at that chunk. Look at that chunk. Oh, and it pulled some of the bark off with it. And it's really gooey and soft inside. It's actually soft. That's a very nice piece of uh, piece of fire starter there. This is a great, this is a gold mine, man. You don't hurt the tree by doing this either. Yeah, then you can squeeze that down, stick that in your bottle. This is sensational stuff. Oh, this is the biggest chunk of uh, sap I've seen so far this morning. That's excellent. Now don't be afraid, you can take a little bit of the bark with it. There's the sap, there's the bark and there's the sap. That'll help that burn longer. Nice, you put that in your little bottle like that. You can grab your five or six or seven chunks of this stuff. Oh, this is a gold mine, man. This is beautiful stuff. It almost has the texture of honey. Interestingly enough, it's not honey. You can't eat this stuff. Don't eat the sap because it's got a turpentine base. So you want to be careful that way. Don't be eating the stupid sap. Yeah, you can put little this fell on the ground, but you can put them little pine needles in there too. Yeah, this is excellent stuff here. I'm getting it all over my fingers, I'm getting sticky. So before I get started with the bow fire, let me show you what I like to do. This is one of my fire starter kits right here. And what I like to do with this, I've taped, duct taped, two full books of matches around the outside of this plastic empty bottle and on the inside I have my cotton balls that are saturated with Vaseline petroleum jelly. That in itself is going to ensure I have the campfire tonight. I carry that with me at all times. Then I have, of course, whoops, some more bottles, some more bottles of my uh, fire starter stuff, my sap from my trees, another bottle of it just in case, and then I have my, I built this in a video last week, my fire starter, my flint and steel with the uh, drill bit and how to make a better handle, I've got that aspect of fire starting, another bottle of good stuff in it, oh, I've got my fold up saw so I can saw kindling. Then there's my small kit fire starter with a small uh, steel and flint with the wax fire starters. That's a very handy little kit to have in case it's windy and my sparks won't work. I can use this. Very nice. Then I've got my ashes my wood ashes, you saturate cotton with that and that will extend the life of your coals. And then I have my sunglasses. <laughs> no, those aren't fire starters. Oh, and then I've got my magnifying glass. I've got a little magnifying glass that weighs nothing that I can start a fire using the sun if I need to. And then I have my magnesium block that you can scrape that magnesium. That stuff will burn at 3,000 degrees. And then this is another ferro rod that you can strike your knife blade across. But this is excellent fire starter. And then I've got my flint and steel. And uh, I've got my char cloth in this little flint and steel. I've got a piece of steel with some chert. And then there's uh, char cloth in that. 
and char cloth is an excellent fire starter too. And then I've got my good old handy trusty matches. So I have at least six different ways to start a fire. Oh, and I've got my Bic. Never forget your Bic. We're not purative, we're not purists. Uh, survivalists that start from scratch were survivors. The more different methods you have of starting a fire, the better chance it will be that you're going to have a fire tonight. We want to up our odds. We want to make sure that we have the odds of starting a good fire. This ensures that in all kinds of inclement weather. And that brings me right back to this pine tree sap. Let's go make a fire real quick, and I'll show you the secret of the pine tree sap. You won't believe it. The other thing I wanted to tell you about all of these fire, different methods of starting a fire, all of this together is under two pounds. There's just, there's no weight to it. I won't, I won't even know it's in my pocket. So that's the advantage of it. I can start a fire whether it's sunny, rainy, day or night, windy. It doesn't matter. I can start a fire. Because I'm going to have the campfire tonight. That's the point. All right, I've got my bow ready. I like to use a long bow. Gives me much more power stroke. Got my block ready. I'll show you a close up of this after I get this done. I'm going to put this right on the bird's nest. I'm not going to mess around with uh, transferring the coal. Got a pretty big bird's nest here though. May have to make it smaller for the moment. Yeah, I'm going to put this right on the bird's nest so that I can put that coal right on that. I've heard there's a controversy that says you're supposed to transfer the coal and all that. I've never tried it this way yet. So I'm going to try it this way. I've got the, uh, I've got a mountain cedar spindle which is real nice. Ooh, I hope that's tight enough. Doesn't feel quite tight enough. I guess we'll see, huh? Then I just put that little baby right in that hole and let's make us a bow drill fire. Nope, not tight enough yet. All right, we can adjust. That's the fun of a bow drill fire, is find out what works and what doesn't. Fun to experiment and play with this stuff. It's a lot more interesting than striking a boring match, that's for sure. So let's see if this is tight enough. You want it to basically snap. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. Put your foot down there so that you can hold that baby in. Put your block on and let's get a fire going. That'll happen to you. You flick that uh, spindle out. I might have a coal. Not quite. Very close. 
if you flick the spindle out, lock and load again, and try it again. Not a big deal. Happens to all of us. We got an ember. See that smoke, and you got your ember. Very nice. We're going the four wheelers. Okay, we got an ember. I used a piece of quaking asp from a hearthwood. I used a quaking asp from my spindle. My other spindle didn't work very good. Now once you get the coal, once you get the ember, you can relax a minute. Catch your breath. Stand up, shake your legs, because you want that to cook. You want that to grow in heat and generate the heat, right? So we'll just let that sit and cook. I put it on some bark. Hopefully that'll make that bark help it along. The nice thing about these embers is I've clocked some of them that I've done. I've been doing this for about a month, practicing off and on, you know, do, testing different woods, playing around. It's kind of fun. Uh, alder on uh, pine, pine on alder. Cedar wood is probably the best wood to use. It's the softest. It, uh, it smells the nicest, but any of the softwoods, the key to the uh, both drill fire is use the softwoods because the hardwoods glaze over. There we go, now we're getting some smoke. Let's take this little baby and put him right into the nest. Steady air, steady air. That'll do it. Come on, baby. Getting a little bigger, a little bigger. Very nice, very nice. See, this is a lot more fun and challenging than striking a boring match, yeah? Use some bushcraft skill and... Uh, Nice flame, nice flame. Now beforehand you put three different piles of sizes of wood. The small stuff, the medium stuff, finger size, and the larger stuff, wrist size, and so on. You put the small stuff on first. There we go. all this wonderful kindling stuff. Put it on there and let her rip. 
I got some uh, pine needles, old bark, stuff like that. And there you have it. From ember to flame. That's fun stuff. You want to put a rock around your fireplace? Be safe, clean it of any old dry dead debris, leaves or old weeds or whatever, you know. You want a relatively clean uh, fireplace and fire camp. Yeah, one of the uh, things that's interesting is it's controversial how I did that bow drill fire by putting the actual bird's nest under the hearth board. Some people like to put a piece of bark and then transfer the ember. Uh, Les Stroud, the Survivor Man, the world famous Survivor Man, watch his YouTube. This is a shout out to Les Stroud. Good videos. You and uh, Corporal's Corner, Corporal Kelly. Shout out to Corporal Kelly. He's fun. He does a lot of outdoor shelters that are really kind of fun to watch. Shows you how to build outdoor shelters if you're stuck overnight. But uh, instead of taking the extra step to transfer the uh, charcoal onto the bird's nest, why not just make the charcoal on the bird's nest? If it's kind of breezy like it is today, why take that chance? Those charcoals are very sensitive. They're tender. Uh, they're light. If a, if a breeze came along and blew it off, you'd lose all your work. Although that's not that big a deal. It's not that hard to do. So, But anyway... I wanted to show you about the pine sap. One of the most impressive things about the pine sap in relation to helping us make a fire. Let me show you that. This will astound you. You've really got to try this on your own. Maybe next weekend I'll make a, uh, a how-to step-by-step bow drill fire making. Uh, I've been doing it about a month. I've actually I don't think I've had a grand accumulated time of five hours yet working on them. And I actually do it as a matter of my daily routine, like putting on my socks and my shoes. I practice the bow drill, and it takes all of maybe five to ten minutes to do each day. I've practiced enough that I'm ambidextrous. I, I can do it left-handed. I am left-handed. I can do it left-handed, or I can do it right-handed. It's a great skill to have that could... Uh, really impress your friends and family. I've talked to uh, dozens of people who say, yeah, I tried it as a kid, but I never could get the charcoal, so I can't do that. I was one of those, and I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to learn how to do this, and I'll give you a step-by-step -step, uh, routine to take. It's only five to ten minutes a day. I'm really sincere. It's not like flint napping. You know, you can flint nap and work on an arrowhead point for like six hours and getting it just about perfect. And if you hit it wrong just once, break it in half and you lose six hours. It's not like this with the bow drill. Not at all. And it's a lot of fun to do. But yeah, I'll show you some stuff I've learned with my practices and my experiments with different types of woods. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Remember, we're playing. You got to play in life sometimes. You can't be so serious all the time. So let me show you the most astounding thing about this tree sap that will save your life in a really bad situation. And it's not by eating it. No, don't eat it. It's a turpentine base. Okay. I've got here a small vial worth of sap wood. Right? Here's a big bottle of water. If you're stuck out in the wild and it's rained for the last two hours at 7 o'clock at night, the sun is in the west, everything is wet, including you, which is very dangerous because you're in the mountain like I am, and it's going to get down to 15 degrees, and hypothermia could set in and you could really be in trouble. Even if the trees are wet, and I mean wet, as in wet, this pine sap being soaked 
even with the bark being wet, and I do mean really, really wet, as in it's been raining like crazy, and you can't do a bow drill fire because you can't make an ember because everything is wet, and all of your kindling is wet, everything is wet, go ahead and gather your wood. Get all the wet small stuff, get all the medium sized stuff, the size of your fingers, etc. Because then you gather this off of the pine trees. Now this is a, oh it doesn't say, anyway it's wait. oh it's one liter, one liter of water that I have been steadily pouring over this pile and it only took me five minutes to scrape a pine tree, a couple of pine trees with that pile. That stuff is soaking wet. I want you to see this to believe it. This stuff still lights even though it's soaking wet. Might take you a second. That's why you were smart enough to take a lighter with you. Right? Always have different forms and methods of starting a fire, you guys. Always. Because you never know what circumstances you're going to have to have a fire going, right? This stuff will burn even when it's wet. And the real beauty of it, it'll burn for a very long time because it's turpentine. This stuff will burn even when it's wet. And that's one of the most remarkable aspects about this stuff. Even when wet, soaking wet, you can have a really good fire. And the beautiful part about this is, this stuff burns for a long, long time. If my breeze won't blow it out, man, there's a heck of a breeze here. Oh, it's going to blow it out. Well, it blew it out, but doggone it. I'm trying to do an experiment here, and the breeze is not helping me. Notice how fast that relit, though. That is incredible. Soaking wet, and this stuff burns like crazy. So if you collect a bunch of this, even when it's wet, you can start your fire, even after a rain. That is one of the coolest things about pine sap because it's turpentine based. Put my hand over here so that breeze won't affect it, but you can see the black soot smoke coming out of it, yeah? Well, it went out again, darn it. Just torch it back up, just like that. That's it. Oh, it went out again. Come on. It's, it's really kind of breezy today. Good lesson, huh? So that's your lesson, man. Burning while wet. And it burns for several, several, several minutes. And if it blows out, relight it real quick. It's still hot when, it's, when that sap gets in the liquid form. It's really excellent that way. It just relights real fast. Then you can start adding your wet kindling once you get a pile of this stuff burning. That's pretty awesome, man. One of the coolest things I've ever learned about pine sap. So in all conditions, windy, wet, sunny, etc. You can have your campfire tonight. Really, truly. Because we've learned about Mother Nature. We're playing, we're having fun, we're educating ourselves, we're experimenting, we're practicing different bushcraft skills, we're learning about the flora and fauna. And that's what it's all about. And finally, Make sure your fire is dead out. Seriously. Make sure your fire is dead out. 
We don't need any wild, more wildfires this year. No smoke, it's dead out. I've stirred it with a stick, it's dead out. So, I don't know about you, but I've had a lot of fun today. It's been a great day being in the forest, learning about the flora and fauna, realizing that we can make a difference in our life, in the life of our friends, in the life of the forest. The forest has a lot of gifts it can give us. It's got a lot of beauty that we can just sit and enjoy while we're learning more about our planet. Take care of the earth and the earth will take care of us. That's the bottom line, you guys. It's the only planet we've got to live on, man. So let's live on it. Let's take care of it. Let's enjoy it. Let's learn from it. See what it has to offer us. It's a spectacular place to spend some time in. It really is. So, that's your backyard professor rough country survival video tip for the day. Don't worry, you will have a campfire tonight. With this kind of knowledge, we will have a campfire tonight. All right, you guys, I'm gonna go. You guys be good, have fun, do well, make friends, be nice, don't forget to play a little bit, and don't forget to learn a little bit. All right, see you guys next Backyard Professor video.